We've got ourselves a fix. Hi, I'm Brian, and I have a perfect example of what happens when you hook a battery up backwards. So if you want to know what happens if you hook a battery up backwards, and then your car just won't do anything even if you put a new battery in, stay tuned. So here we have a 2002 Honda Civic. It's got the 1.7 liter. None of that really matters. This is going to apply to most any car, except for location and amperage stuff. So here's the new battery that we have in. The old battery that's supposed to be a 51, and the guy got a 51R at a discount because it was a used battery. Now what the R means is that there's a reverse polarity. Instead of the positive being on this side like it's supposed to be, and bear in mind you've got this prop rod with the angle that goes back toward the motor. So if you put it in here and it goes back toward the motor and you have it reversed so that the positive's on this side and the negative's on this side, for one, the cables won't reach. The cables will be in the wrong place. And then what you have to do to make it work so that the positive's back over here puts the positive cable right here. And if you do that, you get in trouble because the prop rod will let rest on it. But if you put it in just like this, but the positive's over here, surprise, you've got your battery in backwards. This is a negative cable, and if you follow it, you can see where it makes ground right there. There's that bolt right here that it grounds to. And if you follow it further down, this bolt also grounds to the transmission. So you know that this is the ground. It's black. This is white, which is kind of, anyway. So what happened with this being put in backwards is it blew the fuse, but not before it just totally fizzed over like a shook up root beer, filled the tray full of stuff. I mean, it was acid crawling up the side of the battery this high all the way around. This totally destroyed the battery, uh, but it blew the fuse. So what I did is I took the old battery out, put a new battery in, and then you can actually pop the cover off of these things. It's easier said than done, but it can be done. Then what I do is I took my Leatherman, and this was blown, meaning that instead of being connected across like this, there was a gap in the middle. It burned out like it should to protect the rest of the car. So to get it to make contact, you can pinch it together, and then if you twist it just a little bit, then it'll make contact enough to where you can get going. And that's what I did to get it on and off the trailer so that I could uh, just make life easier for myself. So now the next thing that we're going to do, um, it's a holiday weekend, everybody's pretty much closed, and I don't want to go clear out of town to get parts. So you look at the cap on this, you don't want to lose that. So we need an 80 amp uh, main fuse type fuse. So I went ahead and bought an 80 amp fuse so it's the right uh, thickness or whatever it takes to handle 80 amps and no more. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it fit to a Honda. Uh, this one. These things almost never fit. It's the right style. The box is the same, but the rest of it is obviously just not going to work. So what I do is I just get a, a tungsten awl or whatever you call it. It'll scratch. And I'll turn this one upside down and get rid of the cap at this point. We know that it's 80. You line these two up and then you scratch it from the side that you want to the side that you need to trim. The nice thing about this new one is that it's the wrong size in an advantageous way, meaning that you can cut stuff off and be alright. So we're just going to scratch in where we need to uh, drill. And I drill a hole here, and that's for the screws, but the height and the, the height, the box size, and the amperage are what we need. So I'll trim the rest and we'll be in good shape. So looking at it now, you can see that I'm going to drill here and here, and I'm going to cut it off here and here. Side cuts, um, you could probably even use scissors. This stuff's not that hardy. See, there's your hefty kitchen scissors. Get her done. And then we just need to I'm make it so I don't get cut on it for the next guy. There we go. No big deal. So now we just need to drill some holes. Um, if we had to, wanted to, we could just cut V's into it and screw it down by the V's. Uh, but we're going to just go ahead and do some holes. This costs about four dollars. 
Rather than having to guess, I'm going to hang this off the edge so I can do it upside down. Ideally I'd do it this way, but there just isn't clearance. So you just take your punch, line it up. And I'll start with a small hole in the center and then work out to a big one. If you start with just a big hole, oftentimes the drill press will grab hold of it, spin it around and rip these out and then you're no better off. Plus you've modified it so you can't return it. So at this point we just need to be careful and go slow by doing a small hole first. There we go. All right. So we've got this all lined up. I'm going to use a square side of this just because it's easier. We've got a small drill bit. It's going to sink right into the dent I made. And just go slow. Easy does it. Somebody's like, what does PDR mean? That's uh, paintless dent removal. A little trick I learned when I lived in Indianapolis. Uh, I don't really practice it a great deal. But it's really cool stuff. I'd like to do a video on that sometime if there's some interest. Alright, so I've got a bigger drill bit. That's way too big, isn't it? So what happens when you're thinking about something else and trying to do something incongruent. Like you say on this, I'm going to hold it really tight and just go really slow. The wood block helps keep it flat on the other side so that it doesn't just punch through. That might be a little too big, but it's better to err on the side of being too big than not fitting. Man, is that hot from going slow. All right, let's compare the two. So this is the new one on top. You can see the holes line up pretty good if you turn it around the other way. I did trim it just a little too much and my holes are just a little too big. They're not oval. Oval would be ideal, but ideal but that's done by stamping not by drilling. I have a drill. All right, so now we go to put this in. It doesn't want to sit down in there very well and a lot of that is due to having these all be smashed flat. When you smash them flat it makes it wider. So I'm going to take some pliers and tune it. See how that's wider than it used to be. So I'll just pinch that in just a little bit like that. I'm going to have it face so that you can read the 80 amps. be nice if it had the white paint stamp like the other one did, but take what I can get. As long as you have circuit protection of the right caliber and it fits where you need to put it, you're in business. Alright, so when this was blown, the car was just totally dead. No power windows, you couldn't jump start it, there's just no power whatsoever. Even if I took the battery cables off and then ran jumper cables directly to the ends, it wouldn't do anything. There was no response whatsoever. Let's see how it does now, shall we? We've got ourselves a fix. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you hook a battery backwards or you go to jump start a car backwards, most of the time you're okay by replacing a major fusible link or a fuse like this. Fusible links are a thinner section of wire that you just replace a little piece of wire. What it is is it's like a weak link in the chain that's easy to find and access instead of having damage throughout the system. Some Chrysler vehicles, however, they'll have something that's called a slow blow breaker or I don't even know what you call it but basically it'll heat up nothing will work you leave it for several hours it'll reset so you don't have to buy something new but it's time sensitive you have to wait a certain amount of time before you can start it again that's to be on, that's going to be on the 90s like late 90s type Chryslers if you know specifically what it is please leave a comment for the rest of us below and uh, thanks for watching thanks for coming along being a part of the B-Mob cheers Warning, the following bonus footage at the end contains fish sex.
awesome. This is some slick snot. Really not very many restrictions on it. Okay. You go out over the bull rushes out on the lake. Oh yeah. Yeah. Looks I like don't it. think I have any stuck in my boot this time. Awesome. You can buzz them. Yeah. Cool, That's pretty fun. Awesome. Have a good one. You too. Dude. Nice one. <laughs> that was that's definitely in my top 10 man nice. definitely the best flight i've had you know not on the beach yeah. <laughs> that was awesome that was so much fun thanks for calling me